Hi everyone. I am Lab Loy Chong from National Center for Research on Earthquake Engineering and from the Department of Civil Engineering, National Taiwan University and National Chenggong University. This is my name in Chinese, Zhong Li Lai. Welcome to the course Introduction to Seismic Design of Structures, Lecture 10-2, Design Basis Seismic Force 2. In this lecture, we will continue talking about design basis seismic force. Design basis seismic force is the seismic force at the design basis earthquake level for the design of structures. From seismic design code equation 2 3, we have the equation to calculate the design seismic force, V equal to I divided by 1.4 alpha Y, SAD divided by FU multiplication times W. V is the design basis seismic force. It's the seismic force at the design basis earthquake level. I is the importance factor. SAD is the design basis spectral acceleration. W is the total structural weight. That's the dead load of the structure. Alpha Y is the first yielding seismic force amplification factor. In the previous lecture, we have already talked about I importance factor, SAD, design basis spectral acceleration, W, total structural weight. Alpha Y is first yielding seismic force amplification factor. And in this lecture, we will focus on seismic force reduction factor for structural phase system due to ductility. From a seismic design code equation 2-15, seismic force reduction factor for structural system FU is given. When T is uh, less than 0.2 TZOD, FU, is, FU increases linearly with the structural period T. When T lies between the structural period lies between 0.2 TZOD and 0.6 TZOD. FU is constant. The reduction factor is constant equal to square root 2 RA minus 1. When T lies between 0.6 TZOD and TZOD, and FU increases with the structural period T again. When T is larger than or equal to TZOD, FU is constant again, FU equal to RA. RA is the allowable ductility capacity. And from the equation here, it's obvious that the seismic force reduction factors for structural system, FU depends on fundamental vibration period T and allowable ductility capacity RA. Therefore, once we have the fundamental vibration period T and the allowable ductility capacity RA, we can compute the seismic force reduction factor for structural system FU by this equation. From the graph here, FU can be plotted against the structural period T. When T is less than 0.2 TZOD, FU, the reduction factor, increases linearly with the structural period T. When T lies between 0.2 TZOD and 0.6 TZOD, FU, the reduction factor, the seismic force reduction factor, is constant and equal to square root 2RA minus 1. When T lies between the structural period, lies between 0.6 TZOD, and TZOD, the reduction factor FU increases linearly with the structural period T again. When T is larger than TZOD, the reduction factor FU is constant again and equal to RA. And TZOD here is the corner period between short period and medium to long period. The longer the period T, the longer the period, the larger the reduction factor FU. 
F u become larger, the more reduction for the seismic force V. Therefore, when the vibration period becomes longer, F u becomes larger, and V, the seismic design force, the design seismic force becomes smaller. When the vibration period is very very short, close to one, the structure is the structure is very very rigid, and the reduction factor F u is close to one, because once the uh, structure is very rigid. There will be no deformation, and then the ductility cannot cannot be developed. Therefore, no reduction for the seismic force. F u equal to one. No reduction for the seismic force. When the period is very very long, the structure is flexible. Therefore, there will be deformation, and the ductility can be developed, and then the reduction factor F u is close to R a. Therefore, the ductility can be fully developed, and we have maximum reduction for the seismic force V. Therefore, when T is long, F u is close to R a, then we have the maximum reduction for for the seismic design force. The higher the ductility, the higher the allowable ductility capacity R a, the better the ductility. So that we have larger reduction factor F u, and then we have the smaller design seismic force V, and then we have more reduction for the seismic force V. When the allowable ductility R a equals one, therefore square root two R a minus one equal to one, R a equal to one. The graph here is a straight line and equal to one. The structure has no ductility, therefore the reduction factor F u equals to one, and no reduction for seismic force V. Therefore, when R a equal to one, no ductility and no reduction for the seismic force design seismic force V. And how do we get the number here? Square root of two R a minus one. And when the period, the structural period, uh, lies between 0.2 TZD to 0.6 TZD, the criteria of equal energy is satisfied. Equal energy means that there are two structures here. One is elastic structure, the other is inelastic structure. Equal energy means that the energy of the elastic structure. Equals to the energy of the inelastic structure. Therefore, the area enclosed under the blue under the blue lines is the energy of the elastic force. Is a triangle equal to one half the height of the triangle V E and the width of the triangle delta E. And the area under the red line is the energy. Of the inelastic structure, equal to one half v y. V y is the height of the trapezoid, and then the length of the bottom line equal to r a delta y, plus the length of the bottom line equal to r a times delta y minus delta y. And from the this, this equation, this equality, one half can be cancelled out. So that we have v y times r a times delta y minus delta y plus r a delta y equal to v e and delta e from the similarity of triangle, and delta e equal to v e divided by delta y times delta y. Therefore, the delta e here, the displacement of the elastic structure, equal to v e divided by v y. Times delta y, and we have delta y on the right hand side of the equation. We have also the delta y on the left hand side of the equation, so that this the delta y can be cancelled out. And then we have um, v e divided by v y square equal to two r a minus one. Therefore, v e divided by v y equal to square root of two r a minus one, and f u. Is the factor here? 
equal to square root of 2RA minus 1. Therefore, if the structure is inelastic, the design seismic force may be less, may be less. Therefore, the ratio between Vy and Ve equal to 1 over square root of 2RA minus 1. And the blue line here is elastic structure. Therefore, the force of the structure is linearly related with the displacement of the structure. And the red line here is inelastic structure. When the force of the structure becomes larger and larger, and it yields when the force equal to Vy, and then the, dis the force cannot be cannot be greater again. And how do we get Ra here? When the period is long, there's, therefore the structural period is larger than or equal to T0D. The criteria of equal displacement is satisfied. And we have the two structures here. One is elastic structure. Therefore the force of the structure is linearly related with the displacement of the structure here. And another structure is inelastic structure. And the yielding force of the structure equal to Vy. Therefore, when the displacement is small, the force of the structure is linearly, is linearly related with the displacement of the structure. But when, when the structure exceeds, the, displace, the, the displacement of the structure exceeds delta Y, the force of the structure cannot be increased anymore, and it, it yields. And uh, from the criteria of the equal displacement, therefore, the displacement of the elastic structure, delta E, equal to the displacement of the inelastic structure. Therefore, we have delta E equal to Ra times delta Y. And then, from the similarity, similarity of triangle, Delta E equal to V E divided by V Y times delta Y. And then we have delta Y on the left hand side of the equation and delta Y on the right hand side of the equation. And delta Y can be cancelled out. And then we have V E divided by V Y equal to R A. Therefore F U equal to R A. Therefore if the structure is linear, we mean in we mean linear during earthquake. Therefore, the force for the design of the structure equal to VE, but if the structure is inelastic, that means that the structure can enter into inelastic range, then we have the force smaller, VY, and VY divided by VE equal to 1 divided by RA. Therefore, we have the FU here. FU is the seismic force reduction factor for structural system due to ductility. And uh, how do we calculate allowable ductility capacity from a uh, seismic design code equation 213 for site classes 1, 2, or 3? Ra equal to 1 plus R minus 1 divided by 1.5. R here is ductility capacity of structure. Therefore, from this equation, we know that Ra is less than R. Therefore, the allowable ductility capacity is less than the ductility, ductility capacity. And from seismic design codes equation 2-14, we can have the allowable ductility capacity for Taipei Basin. R A equal to 1 plus R minus 1 divided by 2.0. Therefore, from this equation, we know that R A, the allowable ductility capacity, is less than R. That's the ductility capacity of the structure. And now from this equation, if uh, two structures, one located at site class 1, 2, or 3, one located at Taipei Basin, the allowable structure, allowable ductility capacity for the structure in Taipei Basin is less than the allowable ductility capacity in site class 1, 2, or 3. Therefore, RA here is less than RA there. For site class 1, 2, or 3, Ra equal to 1 plus R minus 1 divided by 
for Taipei Basin RA, the allowable ductility capacity equal to 1 plus RA minus 1 divided by 2. Therefore, for site class 1, 2, or 3, only two-thirds of the plastic displacement is allowed. But for Taipei Basin, only one-half of the plastic dis displacement is allowed because of, of the basin effect, where the duration of the of the structure of the earthquake is longer because of the basin effect. So that the allowable plastic displacement in Taipei Basin is less than that in site class 1, 2, or 3. And this figure is taken from a seismic design code figure C2-1 and R is the ratio between delta U. Delta U is the ultimate displacement by delta Y. Delta Y is the yielding displacement. And for site class 1, 2, or 3, Ra, allowable ductility capacity, equal to 1 plus R minus 1 divided by 1.5. R is the ductility capacity. For Taipei Basin, Ra equal to 1 plus R minus 1 divided by 2. For site class 1, 2, th or 3, only two-thirds of the plastic displacement is allowed. Therefore, the allowable displacement equal to delta Y plus two-thirds delta U minus delta Y. Delta U minus delta Y is the plastic displacement. Two-thirds, only two-thirds of the plastic displacement is allowed. And if we divide delta A by delta Y, then we have delta Y divided by delta Y equal to 1, delta U divided by delta Y minus 1. Therefore, delta A divided by delta Y equal to 1 plus 2 thirds times delta U divided by delta Y minus 1. And delta U divided by delta Y from the definition of ductility capacity, it is R here. Therefore, the allowable ductility, allowable ductility capacity equal to 1 plus R minus 1 divided by 1.5. For Taipei Basin, only one half of the plastic displacement is allowed. Therefore, the allowed, allowable displacement equal to delta A equal to delta Y, delta Y here, plus one half delta U minus delta Y. Delta U minus delta Y is the plastic displacement, and delta Y is the elastic displacement. And if we divide the equation by delta Y, we have delta A divided by delta Y is the allowable ductility capacity. And delta Y divided by delta Y equal to 1, delta U divided by delta Y equal to R. Therefore, we have RA, the allowable ductility capacity, equal to 1 plus R minus 1 divided by 2, and R here is the ductility capacity of the structure. From seismic design codes table 1.3, we can have the ductility capacity R according to the structural system of the structure, according to the structural system of the building. For example, if the structural system is reinforced concrete structure, with moment-resisting frames, then it satisfies those um, ductility detailing. Therefore, we have R equal to 4.8. Of course, in real practice, we may use less R, but the maximum, the upper bound of R equal to 4.8 here. And we go back to the example. So far, we have, from the last lecture, we have I equal to 1.0, importance factor equal to 1.0, SAD, the special acceleration, equal to 1.136, the total structural weight equal to 146.05 ton force. And the first yielding amplification factor, alpha y equal to 1.0. And uh, here, in this question, uh, this question is to ask, to find the seismic force reduction factor for structural system, there's a FU, a residential building located at Yuishui Township, Hualien County. The site is hard site, class 1. 
the building is reinforced concrete structure with moment resisting, resisting frame. The question is to find the seismic reduction, seismic force reduction factor for structural system, FU. Because the building is reinforced concrete structure with moment resisting frame, therefore the ductility capacity R equal to 4.8 according to the seismic design code table 1.3. From R here, the ductility capacity and class 1 for class 1, therefore we can have the allowable ductility capacity R A equal to 1 plus R minus 1 divided by 1.3. Five, and we substitute R equal to one four point eight here. Then we can calculate the allowable ductility capacity R A equal to three point five thirty three. So far, we have the importance factor one point O W equal to one forty six point O five ton force. Special acceleration S A D equal to one point one thirty six. First yielding amplification factor R for Y equal to 1.0 and allowable ductility capacity equal to 3.33. Also from, from a previous lecture, we can have, we already have fundamental vibration period of the structure T equal to 0.268 second and TCOD equal to 0.626 second. Therefore the structural period lies between 0.2 TZOD and 0.6 TZOD. Therefore, FU is constant and equal to square root of 2RA minus 1. Therefore, we have FU equals to 2.463. Therefore, we have seismic force reduction factor for structural system due to ductility. FU equal to 2.463. And this equation is taken from the seismic design code equation 2-15. Once we have SAD, the special acceleration, and FU, the seismic force reduction factor, then we have to find out the modification of this ratio, SAD divided by FU modification. And from seismic design codes equation 2-2, we have the equation, the formula, for SAD divided by FU modification. When SAD divided by FU is smaller than or equal to 0 0.3, no modification is necessary. Therefore, the ratio after modification equal to the ratio before modification. Therefore, no modification is necessary. And when SAD divided by FU is larger than or equal to 0.8, then 70% of the ratio is taken. Therefore, we have SAD divided by FU modification equal to 0.7 SAD divided by FU. Therefore, the, the ratio is reduced to 70%. When SAD divided by FU larger than or equal to 0 0.3 and smaller than or equal to 0 0.8 then we have linear interpolation between these two values therefore SAD divided by FU modification equal to 0 0.52 SAD divided by FU plus 0.144 and here is the graph of SAD divided by FU modification against the ratio SAD divided by FU. When the ratio is small, less than 0 0.3, no modification is necessary. Therefore, the one after modification equal to the one before modification. When SAD divided by FU is larger than 0 0.8, only 70%, it is reduced to 70%. Therefore, the one with modification equal to 0.7 of the one without modification, before modification. And linear interpolation is taken between these two points. Therefore, SAD divided by FU modification equal to 0.52, S 
SAD divided by FU plus 0.144, when SAD divided by FU lies between 0.3 and 0.8. And the curve here is continuous. The shorter the vibration period, the shorter the vibration period, the higher the special acceleration, SAD is higher in general, and the lower the reduction factor, FU. Therefore, the ratio here is high. However, when the vibration period is short, the effect of soil, soil structure interaction is higher. And due to the soil structure interaction, the ground intensity and also the special vibration may be lower. Therefore, when the ratio SAD divided by FU is high, modification and reduction is necessary. Therefore, the ratio SAD divided by FU is modified and reduced when SAD divided by FU is greater than or equal to 0.3. And we back to the example. So far, we have the importance factor, I equal to 1.0, spectral acceleration, SAD equal to 1.136, total structural weight equal to 1.46.05 ten fourths, first yielding amplification factor, alpha Y equal to 1.0, seismic force reduction factor equal to 2.463. And then, in this question, is to find the modification, modification factor for the ratio SAD divided by FU. SAD divided by FU equal to 1.136 here, divided by 2.463 here, equal to 0.4612. is larger than 0.3. Therefore, from seismic design cost equation 2-2, SAD divided by FU modification equal to 0 0.52 SAD divided by FU plus 0.144 equal to 0 0.3838. And the next question is to find the design basis seismic force V. So far we have I, importance factor 1.0. Special acceleration SAD equal to 1.136, total weight equal to 146.05 ten fourths, first yielding amplification factor alpha y equal to 1.0, seismic force reduction factor equal to 2.463, and SAD divided by FU modification equal to 0.3838. Therefore, from this information, from the values here, we can compute the design basis seismic force V equal to I divided by 1.4 alpha Y SAD divided by FU modification times W. I equal to 1.0, alpha Y equal to 1.0, SAD divided by FU modification equal to 0.3838 and then times W. Therefore, the design seismic the design basis seismic force V equal to 0 0.274 W. And we substitute 146.05 here, then we can compute the design basis seismic force V equal to 40.0 ton force. And here's the procedure for the calculation of design basis seismic force. Step one, from the usage of the building, look up section 2.8 of seismic design codes to get importance factor I here. Importance factor I. And step two, from seismic zone, for distance, the distance of the site from the fort, site classification, site one, two, or three, or Taipei Basin, and vibration period, T, get the design basis special acceleration SAD, SAD here, and then we move to step three,
from the dimension of the structure and the dimension of the structural members. Then we can get the total weight of the, of the structure. That's the dead load of the structure. So far we have the importance factor I, special acceleration SAD, and the total weight of the structure W. And then we move on to step four from structural system, design method, and loading combination. Look up section 2.9 of seismic design codes. Then we can get the first yielding amplification factor alpha y here. And then we move to step five from structural system. Look up table 1-3 of the seismic design codes to get ductility capacity R. From R, ductility capacity and site class 1, 2, or 3, or Taipei Basin. According to equations 2-13 and 2-14, then we can get the allowable ductility capacity RA. And from RA and vibration period T, according to equation 2-13 of the seismic design codes, we can get the seismic force reduction factor FU. From the previous line, we have I, SAD, and W. From this line, we have alpha Y and FU. And from the ratio, SAD divided by FU, according to equation 2-2 of seismic design codes, we can get SAD divided by FU multiplication. Then we have I, alpha Y, W and the modification of the ratio between SAD and FU. And from this equation, according to equation 2-3 of seismic design codes, we can get the design basis seismic force V here. And here are the references for this lecture. The first one, Seismic Design Codes of Building, published in 2011 by the Ministry of Interior. And you can download without charge the codes uh, from this website. And this is the video for lecture one, both English and Chinese version. Videos for lecture two, English and Chinese version, lecture three, lecture four, lecture five, lecture six, lecture seven, lecture eight, lecture nine, and lecture ten. And uh, the English version for lecture 10-2 is the current one, is under construction. And from this lecture and the last lecture, we talk about design basis seismic force. And design basis seismic force V here is determined by important factor, design basis special acceleration, Total structural weight, that's the dead load of the structure. First yielding seismic force amplification factor. And also the seismic force reduction factor for structural system due to ductility. In the previous lecture, we have already talked about I, SAD, W, and FY. And in this lecture, we focus on talking about FU, the seismic force reduction factor for structural system. And from SAD and FU, then, then we can have the modification of the ratio between SAD and FU. So we have all the information for the calculation of the design seismic force, V. That's all for this lecture. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.